Hello, it's uh, Bruce here again. <clears throat> Today I wanted to talk a little bit about using dry transfer letterings in your modeling. Uh, I think a lot of uh, modelers stay away from dry transfers for a couple reasons. One is uh, trying to figure out how to line up the letters so they're spaced evenly and look right to the eye. And I think the uh, second reason that people shy away from dry transfer lettering is that they're not sure how securely they're laid down on the model. So I want to address a couple of those issues uh, in this video. Uh, years ago, uh, engineers and architects used dry transfer letters and numbers uh, in their work. And I can remember when one of our sons went to Rensselaer Polytech and we were with them uh, in the school bookstore uh, I, I saw racks of dry transfer letters and picked up quite a few at that time. Uh, that source is pretty much gone and nowadays uh, in our model uh, modeling we pretty much have to rely on Woodland Scenics uh, for their line of dry transfers. Uh, it comes packaged in a couple of ways. Um, one way is this large pack that has letters that go from appropriate for N scale up through uh, O scale or larger. And now they are coming out with some smaller packages uh, like this one. And let me get behind the camera so I can make sure that's in focus. Um, here these are probably good uh, for still a pretty good range of uh, um, scales, but it, uh, it doesn't have those extra large letters that I never used anyway. The uh, Sizes that are in here are uh, 1 16th high, 3 32nd inches high, 1 8th inch high, and 3 16 inches high. And they also give the uh, metric equivalent of all of those. Inside the package, if you open up the package, uh, there's a few things in there. One is the dry transfer letters themselves, and I bought a package that is Railroad Roman White. Comes in a variety of colors. I know I have some red ones and some gold ones as well. There is a sheet of paper that is like their burnishing sheet that is somewhat translucent. The black sheet is pretty much in there for only one reason, and that's so that the white lettering in the package uh, shows up well uh, on the shelf. And then a set of instructions on how to apply these. And uh, I think if you look at this video, you're not going to have to really uh, read those instructions. So that's what's in the, uh, in the package, whether you get the small package or the large. Look at some of the tools that you'll need. Um, you know, a, a modeler's rule just for, for spacing the original uh, uh, letter so you know where on your model you want it. Some type of burnishing tool, and I use, um, let me get one of these pieces of black paper here in a minute. I use a bamboo, a bamboo skewer where I've rounded off the point just a little bit so it's not so pointy. And that's what I use to uh, make the, the letters come off the sheet and then burnish them down. A pair of scissors, uh, not to cut the uh, decal sheet as much as uh, uh, the graph paper sheet that I'm going to talk about. A couple types of tapes are, are handy to have, regular masking tape, and this is basically used to uh, fix up a, oops, a goof. If you uh, make a little oval of it so the sticky side is on both sides, you can lift by pushing down and lifting up. You can lift the letters if, they, if you've made a mistake, either by misspelling a word or something's out of line, you can lift it right back off the model. I also want to have uh, regular scotch double-sided tape, not, not their transfer tape, but the regular double-sided tape. 
And I'll show you how I use that in a minute. Now to address you know, the first concern, which is spacing of the letters and lining up the letters, graph paper is your friend. And what you want to do is get uh, graph paper where the size of the uh, squares are just the right size for the letter to fit right in there in the box. So if you're using, uh, you know, one, uh, 330 seconds letters, you're going to need a different size graph paper than if you're using 3 16 letters. And you can see what I, I do is I, I write the words I'm going to put in there, slate, if you turn it over, run, and that's the name of my, uh, my railroad, slate run railroad. And uh, I'll first put it on the model one way to do the word slate, and then I'll turn it around and use the word run. Now, writing those letters on the graph paper has two purposes. One, make sure that you don't misspell a word, you grab the right letter. And secondly, uh, it helps you to uh, center everything um, on your model. So uh, there's uh, graph paper. Now, although I have quite a supply of graph papers in different sizes, because I'm a retired math teacher, the nice thing nowadays is that you can go on the internet to this web address, www.incompetech.com backslash graph paper backslash light. That should all be on the same line. I want Because I wanted to print it out large for this video, I put it on two lines, but that should be all on one line, no spaces between anything. That is a program that will, uh, very easy to use, will allow you to make graph paper with any size grid. The input that you need on that uh, program is uh, a decimal equivalent of what size graph paper you want. So if you have 16th uh, inch letters, which has a decimal is 0 0.0625, um, I think your input is limited to two decimal places. So I round it up. Don't round down. You want the letter to be able to fit inside. Round it up to 0 0.07. Um, actually, I know you can put three decimal places in because I did that with the 1 8th. So here's the decimal equivalents for the four letter sizes in this package. Uh, for 330 seconds, which is 0 0.09375, I rounded that up to 0 0.10, and you can see what, what you would use. Once you do those inputs, the only other thing that you need, you can choose the color of your grid, how thick the letters, uh, the grid is. I use fine. Um, and you can indicate uh, how many rows and columns you want printed out. Now you can do like a whole sheet of graph paper, but there's no reason to do that for our purposes. Um, I have it printing out a grid that is oh, about uh, 20 letters or boxes wide and five down, and that's plenty sufficient for uh, what our purpose is right now. Now to the use of the uh, double-sided tape. Let me zero in a little bit to the project I'm working on down there. Okay. You can see here that I'm lettering. Uh, actually, this is going to, uh, there's two of these that I fabricated. This one here, whoops, let's get it down where it focuses in. Uh, just has the number one on it on both sides. And the other one is going to have the slate run on it on both sides. And those are going to fit onto this project, which is a, uh, let me back out a little bit so you can see the project. I'm building a Climax locomotive that I want to letter. And this is going to be parts of the uh, superstructure, the cabin, if you will, on the, uh, uh, on the model. So it would have been much easier 
to do the lettering before I glued everything together, but being an impatient person, and since I uh, had to order some new transfer letters, I went ahead and glued some things together, which is making my job harder here. But uh, So you take your, your sheet and you line it up right above the top of the graph paper, just so you can see the bottom of the letter, not on the paper, but on, on the board. And then you rub it just enough to get it to come off of this carrier sheet and onto your wood. And then you move it over to the next square with the next letter, again lining it up on the top of the graph paper, doing the same thing. And eventually what you get is your first word. So there's the, there it's in focus now. There's the word slate. Now, so far I've only rubbed it hard enough to get it to come off of the carrier sheet. Now you take your paper that looks translucent, almost like a heavy tissue paper, and you lay it on top of your letters and go with the grain up and down, and you're burnishing those letters down good. All right. Now it's going to be a lot harder for those letters to lift off, although with a little bit of work and the uh, masking tape, you could still lift them off if there was a problem. I'm going to remove now that paper, and you can see when it gets back in focus here. There you go. The word slate is showing up nicely. Now that double-sided tape, what I use that for is I put it on the back of the uh, graph paper, and when I get everything centered, I rub it down so that amongst the things that you have to worry about, you don't have to worry about this paper moving all over the place on your model. It's going to stay uh, static there. Now I will turn it around get the word run under here, centered again, and the graph paper really does help you center everything, and tape it down and do the word run, and then you got your, your letters down. To make sure that it stays down for, uh, through handling and so forth, you just get whatever you can right now on the market of a uh, uh, flat, clear finish. I'm using Model Master. Earlier I always used Polyscale, but that's become unavailable. Um, put about two light coats over this that whole side there. It dries flat. You can't see it. And you will not be able to get that uh, those letters up without using something like a razor blade. So I think that takes care of the major concerns that people have. Again, that graph paper is your friend. And uh, it's actually quite easy to uh, uh, apply dry transfer letters. I, I, my Slate Run Railroad, because it's, uh, it was a real railroad, but certainly nobody's supplying models for it, and uh, so therefore there's no decals for it. And instead of making decals, since almost all my models are wood, um, dry transfer lettering works fine. So every piece of rolling stock, uh, the locomotives and so forth are lettered using the dry transfers. And I use it for signs on buildings, signs on fences, and so forth. I mean, once you get used to it, um, it's probably quicker to apply dry transfer letters than it is decals. Okay, that's all for now.